brewing over a potential gender gap in our education system. Some say schools are being too nice to girls and too harsh with boys. Here are the facts. Preschool boys are nearly five times more likely to be expelled than girls. In grades K through 12, boys account for nearly 70% of all suspensions. Are zero tolerance policies to blame? Or is something else going on? Christina Hoff thought about that and wrote a book about it. She is Christina Hoff Summers and is an AEI scholar and author of this book, The War Against Boys. You say the boys are the have-nots in our education system. When did that happen? Well, boys have always struggled with school. But there has never been a time where it was more difficult for them because when they start as early as kindergarten or first grade, it's almost as if they exist in a cloud under a cloud of disapproval. And that's where you get these high suspension rates because there's just very little tolerance for male rambunctiousness. Here, for example, you got this Christopher Marshall. He used a pencil as a gun, get suspended. Josh Wells cut his Pop-Tart in the shape of a gun. He got suspended. Alex Evans threw an imaginary hand grenade, and uh, that got him in trouble. And, uh, of course, see, you see there where he's dressed. This is just boys being boys, but now it gets him in too much trouble. Too much trouble. And, I mean, I understand there was a reason for zero tolerance policies. We wanted to rid our school of violent children or children dealing with drugs. That's understandable. But this policy has been misapplied. And boys are paying a very high price. And, and what is that price? Well, for example, little boys, and this is true cross-culturally, their characteristic play is rough-and-tumble play. Right. There's a lot of mock fighting, sound effects. It's, it's a critical part of their socialization. Yet on many, in many schools, boys are not allowed to, to play that way, they, and they will even be punished. And narratives of fantasies of vanquishing bad guys... Little boys, this, they, 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 this kind of fantasy play is typical, and yet boys are made to be, be ashamed. They're punished. This is harming them in every possible way. And you know, it's interesting, Christine, you just told me that some countries notice it, recognize it, and take an action, and those countries are? Well, Canada, Australia, uh, Great Britain, they're about 10 years ahead of us addressing what's known as the boy gap. Today, girls are far more likely to go to college. They get better grades. They're winning the honors. I mean, they're leaving boys in the dust when it comes to literacy. Now, so these other countries are addressing it, and they're trying to wow. make their classrooms friendlier to boys. Yeah, 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 my bad, my bad. All right, see, because of my time situation, I don't know, you see my backdrop. I do got a lot of shit to do today, so I definitely got to be out. I could push it maybe to 1030. It depends on what time this guy texts me in, on his way, but definitely uh, 1015. Um, all right, so there will all be right, no so news. Just one news story. Nah, I had no news, bro, because last Cash, week. Cash, don't do that. I got one. I don't have <laughs> <have news. laughs> one. News I don't get story, I kind of want to talk to. Nah, bro, no nah, news Nah, nah, no, no news, news stories. Man. No news stories. Because last right, week, bro, we didn't almost set a record. It took me a hot minute to edit last week's podcast. For time One series. news cast. You don't got no news. Yo, story. we can share for the end, bro. We'll share yeah. for the end. I got a new story. How about that? So uh, we're gonna jump into the questions, fellas. Questions. Um, let's start with Black Zeus question because this, nah, this start, is start with Smith. Start you with Smith's least, question. Start you with at least introduce the book. Oh yeah, all right. So the yeah, book we, we're reading. Is can we start with Smith's is, question first, please? Can we start um, with Smith's question first? You can go ahead and ask him. <laughs> <laughs> You yeah, start my question. I'd tell you it, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get it to Christina Hoff, um, Hoff Summers' book, "The War Against Boys." This book put me. I was feeling upset as I was reading this shit. The, the propaganda that was happening with these feminists. But let's get into the book. Let's start off with Black. This is a Black Zeus recommendation, so it's only right that we start off with his question first. His question is, why do you think feminists push to infiltrate or tear down all male organizations such as schools and fraternities or male-dominated interest groups? Is inequality of outcome truly equality? Well, that's, the purpose behind this question is just that as in, in the book the author was speaking about, um, how there was Aviation Academy, mm. a school yeah. that yeah. is not an all boys school, but it, it gets the interest of boys majority. And though the fact of this school was very successful with its graduation rate and, and college attendance rate, 
of 88% of its um, graduates, um, especially being a large majority, majority of the school were minorities that came from below the 80%. poverty line. All right. So being the, even despite with all the success, feminists are still trying to attack the school and shut it down because it doesn't have enough females, not looking at the fact of um, it's not a matter of whether females are allowed because obviously there were females um, in the school. They're just mm -hmm. not that much females that are interested in the school, you know? So the whole thing is, is that why is it these uh, feminists are so hell bent on breaking down anything that boys are being, um, being successful at one. And um, why do they think that for some reason they think that um, equality of outcome equals equality like you know it's not a matter of like does my girl get a chance to go to the school which the school has no problems with it's a matter of my girl has to be there regardless of whether she wants to be there or not which makes no damn sense at all um and i find that happens with a lot of groups you know most recently i heard a um a um uh what was it a um I'm sorry. Um, I heard something, I think it was on YouTube, where there was a transgender that was complaining or a transgender group that was complaining um, how they don't make up a certain percentage of Hollywood actors and actresses. And it's just like, how many of you actually are interested? How many of you are actually good at, you know, like, so it's just because you exist, like you just automatically get a spot, not because of your qualifications, not because the fact of you're, you're interested or any of that, just because you exist, it, 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 you know, whatever. And this is what happens with a lot of groups that they're always looking for equality of outcome, not equality of, um, of opportunity. So what do y'all think? Um, yeah, man, to be honest, the infiltration of male organizations um, and trying to dismantle fraternities on college campuses, I've noticed for the past couple of years now, um, a lot of the, the 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 dismantling of fraternities have, have often been at the hands of false allegations of sex, sexual harassment and stuff like that, calling them male toxic spaces. Um, yeah, like, well, I, I have an issue with that, to be honest. I just feel like the, the hypocrisy is, Let's infiltrate these male spaces, but simultaneously have safe spaces for women. And I just feel like I don't understand how this is becoming an acceptable practice where you could just have a space that specifically is, you know, safe for women. And like, there shouldn't be any of that. You know, like I take, for instance, this, this book club for, for months now, we've contemplated, you know, adding you know adding people onto this book club and i remember when we were reading the myth of Mel power i suggested adding one woman you y'all all shot me down was like nah hell nah this is a male safe space and it's just like and you know and i quickly came to the realization after all of you guys basically said you know um what this book club means to have this sort of space to freely express your thoughts and feelings um i i i I honor that. And I don't know, man, it, it's, it's crazy that these feminists would, and maybe we got to get to this in Kelvin's questions. It's just like some of the things that, that bothered me was this complete distortion of statistics, how they tried to present statistics that was in favor of their plight versus to like, what's really truly going on. But, um, and in regards to like the equality of outcome, I say this, this is not just gender. I think this is all race. I just think that it's, it's a misnomer to really try to have true uh, equality of outcome. I just think that you should have the equality of opportunity, but not the equality of outcome. I wasn't excluding, um, um, I wasn't, exclu I wasn't um, just. No, no, that was me. That was me. I'm, I'm just saying because we're reading this book. I, I meant all yeah. groups, not just transgender. Uh, I was just using it as an example where okay. it's like, okay, why are you calling victimhood? Because you make up 1% of the population. So now there should be 1% of you and everything, you know, like that's just not realistic. Yeah. And to your point, like when you force a child into that situation, like, all right, you're now forcing these girls into these STEM programs and they're failing. 
all this does is ramping up the 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 argument that we need to do something about these girls failing, not necessarily honing into the they're reasoning is yeah, exactly. Like they're just not interested. Yeah, I think um yeah, I think that's some bullshit. And I think when we read this other book, I forget the name of the book, but going back to the coal mining, right? And the and the job of coal mining and what kind of job it was. And um does a female really want to be a coal miner? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um so that, that whole issue. I forget what book we were reading, but I'm just going, I'm trying to link these two in between because, yeah, the Aviation Academy, um, like Schubert was just saying, Aviation Academy, 75 years the school been in place. I didn't even know about it like that, and I had to find out all this shit. 75 years school been in place, right? Um, and there, there are two other schools um, where the females dominate, and that was the fashion school, right? And I'm missing another school. The, it was the fashion school. What was the other school, fellas? It was another school. Nursing. The females in the fashion school was like 70% or, and the other one was 92%. It was, it was um, the, I forget I, the other school. Was nursing. The second one was nursing. Nursing. That, that was it. Apply, applied nursing. Yeah, some, something like that. Applied nurse sciences or some shit. Like nursing. It was nursing, though. Um, so the females all gravitated towards that. It wasn't that the... Um, the aviation academy didn't have spots for females. There were some females that attended aviation academy, but for the feminists, there weren't enough females that attended aviation academy. You know, they wanted to dominate aviation academy, even though um, females didn't want to go into that field. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's the same like them coal mining. We want equal, but y'all, you want to really go into this coal mine as a female? You want to go and do this job? You know what I mean? I think a lot of this. Um, you know, the feminist movement, you know, I think a lot of it is we want equal rights, but we just want equal rights for everything without really understanding that some shit we don't even want to do. We just want to say we want to do it. I think we were having this discussion before when we were talking about the female being on the back of the garbage truck. Yeah, but the whole thing is, it's, is that it's, not my that, it's not even a matter of having equal rights because they have equal rights. They're not concerned about <clears throat> having the right. They're having... They want the equal outcome, um, outcome. and they sometimes the outcome. just the equal outcome, but the over dominating outcome. Because even when it was presented that in many cases that women are overwhelmingly more successful than men, you know, um, they 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 didn't dispute that. They didn't say, "Oh, that's too much" or nothing like that. I mean, I remember when I went to my wife's master's. Um, to her, my wife's degree, um, graduation for her master's degree. At the um, at the uh, ceremony, the dean um, made an announcement during the ceremony that seventy percent of the graduating master's degree um, class was was female, and everybody was, oh yeah, this, and then it's like, listen, I'm glad to hear that you know women are making progress, but think about what you're saying. You're saying out of every ten students only three are male seven are female is that it is that equal outcome no it's not and the thing is you also have to think down the line out of these seven females later down the line won't they want a male if they're into dudes you know um that is equal to them and the, the pickings are slim there's seven of you chicks and only three dudes so unless y'all believe in you know um polygamy you know, there's not going to be that many options for you. So down the line, you know, is that really what you really want? Is yeah, this they, overwhelming one-sided thing? Go ahead, you Henry. Know? They don't even want ones that's equal. They, they want ones that's higher earnings, regardless of what they're making. I don't know, I think it's a double standard. Like, we all talk about double standards in favor of males, but, I mean, how can y'all want to have... Like, I think about, and I don't know, y'all can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think about, even when you... Think about like the uh, all women summit and all of these things that they're promoting online. Where it's like s- specifically for women only. You know, we really don't make a big ass deal about whether it's events or whatever. Now we get a school that's not even for us. Uh, I, I don't really. I, I think like you know we always talk about the double standard that's just it working in reverse. I don't understand why. Like, if I'm the owner of the school, I'm saying, fuck it. I'm just going to change this shit to an all-boys school and now can't none of y'all come. <laughs> like, 
for me, that seems like problem solved. I mean, well, that school's probably relying on government funding. That's why I'm they about can't. To say it didn't, yeah, it, it had yeah. a lot to do with the funding. They weren't getting certain monies because they said it wasn't equitable, and unless the school has that, um, well, no, the reverse, not the sixty forty, because that was the tipping point. But yeah. unless the school has enough females in their school, they're not going to um, be able to get money. Basically, they're not see, going to be able to get money. I, I, like, I think. I think. I think a lot I don't of don't this, agree with that part, though. No, check it out, like, though, Listen to this. I was listening. I was listening um, to something else that was talking about guys, right, boys, um, in this warship. But check this out. She was writing this book earlier, right? There, I think, like. The feminist movement. I'm not. I'm not opposed to any of the things that the females want in a feminist movement. I think sometimes it go, it does go a little um, hairy, carry so to speak, because females um, like blacks never got um, their their equal footing in America, so to speak. You know what I mean? For a long time, females didn't get equal pay and all this shit, and they just trying to get their 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 equal footing. I get all that. Um, but when she's talking about you know, more females are entering college and things like that. Yeah, they were entering college at that time. I mean, is this still is this still for 2020? Now, I'm looking at my classes and I say AP classes are still more um, female dominated, depending on the subject. Um, and I say more females um, are in honest classes, again, depending on the subject. Um, but the overall thing is like they were talking about this, you know, the SAT and poor people taking the SAT and more females taking the SAT than more males. Um, I think we still got this thing that's in the mail that, you know, most males have that idea of going to fucking war, bruh. Like, and most females have the idea of staying home. And I think the same way that we got to deprogram ourselves from the slavery, we got to deprogram ourselves from that war mentality of, this is the role that a female plays and this is the role that a male plays. I think that gender identity with these roles need to fucking stop and that will open us up to be better. See, Smith, I agree. I get like the whole idea of females wanting an equal footing, but when you think about the schooling system, there is equal footing in the sense of you have schools that females may be more interested in. So it's not like there's just aviation academy and then there is no fashion or design or dance, whatever. So I don't agree with like, from the standpoint of in order to get this government funding, you know, you have to try to get a certain amount of females and males in the school. Yeah. Like, okay, I understand that. From the standpoint of it's not fair, we have to make sure that the females go because they're not getting X, Y, and Z. I'm not with it. And I mean, it's I like know. this. It's like this, yo. Cash went to St. Benedict's, right? I Ray think I've heard Cash say that before. Yeah. My brother went to St. Benedict's, all boys school. Um, and then you had the little whole house on the hill, right? What, St. Vincent? Oh, come on now, <laughs> bro. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, we talk when I'm talking. Okay. Because so, <laughs> I used to live across the street with a little whole house on the hill. <laughs> and it's funny that you laughed. That brought back memories. So you know. <laughs> yeah, I do but, not want, you know what? Let me say that. My bad. I should have not dropped St. Vincent. I got to blur that out. I got <laughs> I got to blur that out. <laughs> Yeah, Karen got real giggly about that. Like, yo, a lot of times, man, a lot of times. <laughs> Just a disclaimer. The the voice of Cash does not respond to IBC. <laughs> <laughs> we do not hold the same views. We do not hold the same views as Cash. The women that graduate from St. Vincent are upstanding women. You are yeah. not you are not hoes. My bad. Yeah, that's why they school closed now, right? Oh, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> All right, my bad, Smith. Go ahead, brother. <laughs> no, I think it's too. I think um, you know, it's it's like everything else. You know, somebody always wants a foot in. Um, and 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 with with the females as, as a whole, Smith. Let me with, ask you this question, right? Do you yeah. feel like it's the same with males though? Like when females got their own shit, do we try to get our foot in and be like, "Yo, that ain't fair." There ain't Hell enough no. men at the um, women's summit. There ain't like now, now listen, I Jen, I Jen does do that now. So there's been a dude that 
joined the cheerleading squad. There's been another dude that went hetero to dude, like he got, he's identifying as a heterosexual. Right. Dude. Niggas, niggas been on the cheerleading teams for years, bro. Dudes, you don't see them big brolic dudes in college. No, no, no I'm not talking about the chill. I'm talking about the ones that's all girls, like the dance cheerleading team. I think, yeah, yeah, like dudes want to be on that. You know what I mean? Are they that's straight already, dude though? Uh, but no, dude, but that's dude suit so he could be in the Girl Scouts. You know what I mean? Like it's different. Okay, well that's stupid. Did. But the dance team, yeah. no, it's not stupid, Henry. It's no, 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 that's said. stupid. This this what the dudes are saying. Think, think about it. The dudes are saying. The dudes are saying females always went in for a male. Let me see if I can get in for some female shit. That's what the dude is but saying. But they that's got all. the Boy Scouts. Hold on. Hold on. The, no, the boy, but girl, listen. Hold, you remember when a girl tried to get into the Boy Scouts? Do you remember when the girls so, tried to get to into the Boy Scouts? Point. Here's the thing. To both your points, like, you know, Kelvin's right. Majority of dudes, there's no, there's no male group or organization trying to infiltrate women's, you know, groups and organizations. No, not no organization, no. And then no. on your side, Hop, the, the minority, the very minute minority of dudes that's trying to get on the cheerleading team or this, that, and the other are like, you know, so, so, so minute that they're, they're you know, they're outliers. It's Yo, not think about this, Hubert. Can I send us a picture? I don't know who sent the picture of the Commodore kicker. I did, yeah. <laughs> yeah, cast is the picture of the girl who kicked the fucking football because she had to still be on a football team, bro. This right. is the shit I'm talking about. Girls want to be involved in everything that's male oriented. So some males said, fuck it. I won't be in your shit just to fuck it up. Just to throw a wrench in there because y'all want to be in every fucking thing. But once again, they are an outlier. Those males are outliers. They, yeah, there's no group. Yeah, we're, we're talking about male group. feminist groups. Yeah, we don't have two and nine. We don't have like a male a group. Yeah, you're right. You're right. We don't have a male group that's like, cow, cow, we won't bow. We want to be in your v- vaginal. We don't, yeah, we don't have no group doing that. <laughs> you say, cow, cow, we don't want to be your vaginal. Okay. <laughs> 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 oh, man. But nah, yeah, it, it, I don't know what it is, man. It's the victim mentality that women, um, just seem seemingly constantly want to perpetuate. I love like what you was talking about. Like they don't deny it, but they always find a way to nitpick certain statistics that constantly paint this narrative. I just, you know, this kind of goes into like our last book that we were reading in regards to the coddling of America. Like you kind of saw this sort of distortion of statistics. And I just feel like a lot of these stuff, man, when they get presented to panels where people are making executive decisions on programs to be cut, you know, girls could be infiltrated into boys program or we're dismantling fraternities. I feel like, yo, in all honesty, there needs to be a real, every school needs to have like a legit thorough investigation of these statistics before they make any of these rash decisions. And that's where I, like, I got upset when reading these um these first four chapters in this book with these feminist group is just like, I just don't understand how you can have a counter study to retort what these feminists are saying, but yet their agenda is still being pushed through that, that irritates the hell out of me. Yeah. But you got to remember when the females get together and they got an agenda, they push that shit and they get changes done. When the males get together and have an agenda, you could try to push it all you want, but we ain't shutting down corporations. That soccer mom, they're shutting down fucking Walmart, bro. How come we don't have that power, though, as men? I don't understand how we... You just said it. You just answered your own question. Because we're men, and nobody gives a fuck about a man, we're disposable. Remember that. You forgot about what we read? Nah, you're right. You're right. Here, here's my two cents on it. It's just the fact of a is that majority of the time when the presentation is being made, there are no details behind the presentation. They just you know hit you with all this information really quick, and they try to trigger emotions out of you. So, for instance, when she was speaking, I believe in the second chapter, mm-hmm. um, they gave you statistics where it seemed like women are at a disadvantage, right? Like they'll say like, oh, there's only uh, let's say five percent of women at let's say aviation academy right Mm -hmm. you know you know and and then you know they came in with some poetic oh as our girls are rising into the age they get to a certain age where they just drop and they give up on life you know what i mean and the whole thing is when they put those two things together they they hit you emotionally and you're not getting a chance to actually consider the information and what 
the cause of the information is. You're just putting the two together like, oh, the, our girls are failing and they're not looking deeper into the issue. This is the problem with statistics is that anybody can present statistics. Remember mm -hmm. we were talking about a couple weeks ago how they present a statistic that, um, that white students are 30% more, um, more likely to fail with online school. Um, Latinos, 40%. Black, 60%. And it, if you're an ignorant person who doesn't look at it and say, you know, why? You're just thinking, oh, the Blacks are at a disadvantage or they're just this, that, and the other, blase, blase. And you, or, they're, or even worse, you think that they're um, inferior, all right? You think that they're inferior. Instead of saying, no, it has nothing to do with race. It's a matter of what your economic status is. It's a matter of how committed your 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 family your your parents are what your situation is to have the resources to get what you need those are the facts but statistics don't give you facts statistics gives you an end result no way it doesn't talk about how we got to that end result which goes right back to the falsehood of equality of outcome mm -hmm. you know it's very misleading and that's the thing you have these these um politicians or people in government office who are not get who don't have the time to sit there and analyze all of this information, do the background research to find out the validity in it. So they make rash decisions based off of emotion. You're and right, this because this last stimulus was five thousand pages and it got passed and not overnight and nobody read it. it nobody because, read it, yeah. Because the emotion was let's just put a stimulus out there. Yeah. I, it's, it's a shame because I just feel like when you talk about these, you know, I, I don't know, man. I just think that back in the day, you had, you know, philosophers, they would sit in a, you know, a circle and they would, you know, debate these arguments. I just feel like if you have a feminist group presenting an argument with loose statistics, because the, the statistics are very loose in how they use it, I just would have been like, if I was a committee member to say, okay, where are the holes we could punch in this? Those are the questions yeah. we should be, you know, we should be asking if you're presenting something that could distort, you know, show favoritism to for one gender over another. You well, know, the American is, Association for the University of Women did that. They were saying that the schools were shortchanging the girls. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? They had that 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 what was it? They they the psychological foot binding that they had on these girls. Um, and I'm still like, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta read more of this book. Yeah, I'm a male, and I have a and I have a male son. Now I've read um, the miseducation of black boys before, so I'm just trying to see where, where she's going with this shit, bro. Um, and understand that I'm taking it with a little. I don't know. I'm not going to say I'm taking it with a grain of salt. This is a a a, a female writing about males. That's oh, so all. you're a little skeptical about her her gender. I got to I got to hear more. Okay. I got to well, hear more. We'll definitely you know, get to I mean, this the stats, the stats that she, the stats that she's talking about, you know, with the SATs and all that. Um the fact that they're trying to and that's what I was just bringing up when I brought up that girl the Commodores from Vanderbilt or whatever fucking school she was. Um, Vanderbilt. You know, Vanderbilt, right? They're coming yeah. at the sports with a vengeance now. You know what I mean? Now it's like now we we try to get everything else equal. Now we got to go after the sports and it's like at the end of the day, bro, I don't want to see a chick playing the NBA. You're I'm not strong. tough enough. You're not strong enough. You're going to get shipped on. I don't want to see that. That's just not going to be competitive for me. Fuck, I want to see that shit for. You know what I mean? Honestly, like, not. stay in the WNBA if and, and play over there. If she's good enough to get into the NBA, if she's good enough to get into the NBA and she's good enough to hold her own, then let her be in there. Yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah. You're right. Oh, shit. You yeah. didn't got no, Henry to check. Let, let Henry shine in. The the no, they already got, they have their own league. Why do they need to come to ours? <laughs> See, that's the thing. Like, <laughs> okay, okay. So look at this. Okay, so so look, so like if, if LeBron James or James Harden or Steph Curry says, you know what? I done already made $300 million in the NBA. Let me go to the WNBA and play for $50,000 a year so I can dominate. Like, yo, what sisters? Y'all already got your own shit. Yes, and the, and the guys, and the guys that has had the transgender sexual change and become girls and ended up in girls sports, they're fucking dominating and people were saying it's unfair. Yep, that's true. 
Yeah. They're yeah. saying it's unfair. And that's like, real facts. You know, what I don't like about women infiltrating male sports is, like, I just don't want, and I saw this personally growing up um, when I was wrestling, um, where it was this sort of, like, implied take it easy on her. It's just like, take hold up. Yeah, like, yeah. I didn't like that. It was just one of those things like, all right, you're infiltrating our sport. If you were another guy across the mat, I'm going at you the way I would normally go at any other guy. But, like, I never forget the first time I wrestled a female coach was just like, yo, just take it easy on him. And I was just, and I was just, (laughs) it was disappointing to hear that because seeing these women now trying to infiltrate men's sport, and I don't think they actually, you're not going to see a large volume of women, you know, doing this but like even if you manage to get one female that managed to slither through the cracks and find themselves into some male professional sport i just feel like they're going to change the rules or change the implied rules on how you're going to play against this woman and it's just like that will irritate the hell out of me it's just like they're going that's to be, be like the new quarterback to my, to yeah. my, that's the stipulation is that if a woman's going to come to a male dominated sport such as football such as male basketball such as wrestling they have to know there is no, you know, you get a special treat. No, you're getting treated just like everybody else. If yeah, you, you want true equality and you want to come into this arena, you will be treated the very same way. If not, yes. then you're you're creating you're creating a bias and you're creating a um um uh I hate to say it, female privilege. And See, that word, you, but think I'm about okay it. With, if a dude, if a dude, if a cornerback is getting ready to hit this wide receiver, and this wide receiver is a female, dude is pulling oh, up, right? No, nah, yeah, 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 no, nah, you can't. Go ahead, Henry. See, to my, to my, to my, to my understanding, it's because because we've been psychologically trained, it's the psychological nah, football of the male. First we're off, not going to hit a female that hard. First but, off. If you take it easy and you end up losing, bro, you'll never be able to to, to hear the end of that. That's number one. Number two, I mean, and, and I'm personally You're okay right. with females infiltrating male sports if there is no female version of the sport. So, like, okay, there's no, in high school, for example, there's no female football team. Okay, so let her play football. There, If there's no female wrestling team, okay, cool, let her wrestle. But all of these books that we've read, a culmination of it, women are saying that they want equality, I'm not taking anything easy, whether it's in the work. For, like, why would I take it easy on you in football? But then, okay, I'm going to hire you for my business and I'm going to treat you. Just, so I got to take it easy there too and not go as hard on you as I would on a male boss. Like, yo, that, it's the same exact thing, whether one's physical or not. Bruh, just thing. imagine that, hey, that chick kicker. The moment she would have got hit on a play. Yo, that's all you have met, Bruh. That headlines would have been completely different the moment yeah, she would have got been, exactly. <laughs> that like, headline would have been that's crazy. Like saying, bro. That's like been. saying, yo, that's like saying, yo, I want to live in a mansion, but I don't want to pay none of the bills. Yo, if you got to take the good with the bad, you want to play for I hear you. I definitely you hear you. Yeah, exactly. We hear you. <laughs> like, yeah. But I'm telling you what society, but, yeah, is that but. Exactly. I, just, I, I just don't think the but. headlines is going to read well, bro. Like, like you know, like we saying, like women are picking and choosing which careers yes. they're seeing. Yeah, the it's not standard. gonna, it's, it's not gonna read well that first time. W- male hits female kicker, but as it continues to happen, then it's gonna start turning into okay, maybe this chick should quit. No, <laughs> or they can no, say maybe not, the kicker it's should not, not be continue, hit. <laughs> it's not going to continuously happen, Henry, because once that first person is ostracized, everybody else is going to pull up. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm telling you. Nah, pull up, man. Nah, we bro, to, well, we that's a good MLK's analogy. The football to, rules. Like, think about MLK's on the field, bro. We can't have niggas just quitting just because it's tough, huh? Because we still be we still be segregated. First hey, yeah, I got a question. Is, my, my fault, fellas. Are y'all by a window? Because it's fucking a snowstorm out here and it's sticking. Yeah, it's yeah I see it. It's supposed to rain a little bit later, so. Oh, okay. Because it's yeah. six. I got to drive to New Get some some bullshit. <laughs> But um, all right, man. Let's get into the next question. Let's get into Henry's question. Uh, which let's is... do Smiths. <laughs> <laughs> My question is this, Henry. We'll save Smiths for last. Do you think that R and T is needed in the male life? Now let's see if you read, motherfucker. R and T. Yep. 
I don't know what RNT stands for. Oh, he ain't read, fellas. No, I definitely read. Uh, he read. He just wasn't paying attention. It's the oh, rough. he wasn't paying attention. Don't don't come at me for questions, bro, because I read this shit, bro. That's what I do. Bro, didn't nobody say you didn't read, Smith. You so just said RNT, RNT is called <laughs> rough and tumble play, Henry. Well, why did you just say rough good. and tumble play? Because, because, because that's RNT. not that's not what it was called in the book, Henry. Smith, everybody knows anytime that you do like a abbreviation, the first time you say it, you have to tell what it is. No, not when you read the book. So the yeah, author the didn't first, say first, what first, rough and tumble play first, was the first time. The RNT goes with Kelvin's <laughs> questions. That's Kelvin's question, which yeah, is does the attempt at eliminating <laughs> Smith is something else. Does the attempt at eliminating aggressive activity such as tag, shorter recess time, etc., for males make them more or less likely to act aggressively? Keep in mind that these very activities may increase the male testosterone levels. Yo, you asked the question and you didn't even know what you was talking about, son. You got to what do you, better, man. What are you talking about? Just because I didn't call it RNT? <laughs> so... <laughs> So, all right. So because, can, because as a VP... Uh, go, school, ahead, sh- go ahead, Schubert. Let me, Schubert, let me say this. Question. As a VP, when you're in school, you have to be able to say, listen, they were just doing R&T. They wasn't fighting. You know what I mean? Okay, bro, you're right. You got to be able right. to use that okay. terminology. Let what me the write fuck that. are you reading for? Let me we're write not going to use it. But the what? first time I use R&T, they ain't going to know what it is. I got to say what it is first. No, you say R&T, and then you look at them like, so you don't read? And then you be like, when they say, well, which R&T? Then you say, rough and tumble play. And then you have them the book, The War Against Boys, and say, read this, please. No, I'm Yo, Smith is that asshole at the just, school system. I'm I can just tell him. him I'm just Smith is an asshole. No, no, I'm a, hey, look, and they want me to be an administrator. They want me to be an administrator. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to send it in an email. Right, before this goes off the rails. Can exactly. We can we get back to the questions? Can we go That's back to Henry's man. question? Oh, oh, here's the thing, right? Here's the thing. As... As a father, as a coach, you know, and I've worked with a lot of uh, young boys from ages as young as like six all the way up through high school. Um, Boys, because of their energy levels, their testosterone levels, whatever you want to call it, you know, they need an outlet. All right. They need an outlet. So, for instance, I put my son in, in, in sports. My son plays much more aggressive sports. That's what he likes lacrosse football wrestling you know these are sports that he enjoys he's not a big you know huge fan of tennis or golf or 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 anything a little bit softer or anything like he likes aggressive sports and i find that when he plays those sports because he's getting that energy out he comes home he's a little bit more calmer he's a little bit more focused and he's able to be more productive in school and everything else and that seems to happen with a lot of young boys. Testosterone levels are going to go up regardless. If you don't have an outlet to relieve it, then all it does is that it's pent up energy. And then you have a, a whole nother problem. So it's, it's not a matter of um, them just being aggressive. And just to use as an example, the yoga that um, is done, that you see in a typical yoga class in, in um, schools and everything, is not the original yoga. If you went to India and practiced the original yoga, it was um, it was very calm, very you know non-active um, and everything. It's the fact of um, if you look into the history, um, young males high of testosterone to keep them from being high energetic and masturbating. This thing they created this more active form of yoga because in in the Hindu religion you cannot be aggressive. So you can't be doing boxing or anything like that or any aggressive sports. So the whole thing is they made this form of yoga that we use in America now in these classes as a way for them to release that energy. So even when you're not being aggressive, young males need a way to release relieve that energy. And so it's not pent up. I, go ahead, Henry. No, I was gonna. I was gonna see what, what y'all had to say first. I'll jump in. Now, I, now I agree. Um, I think you know. I think Kelvin mentioned this. I forget which book. I think it's the liability. You know, you got you got um you got weak parents these days. You know, their kid comes home with a black eye, and it's like, who did this to you? And it's just like, well, this happened during recess. Why is recess so aggressive? And you know, 
And next thing you know, you got lawyers involved, you got system administrations involved. So I think they just see boys activities being too, too rough, not realizing like, yo, and that's what it is, man. Boys are just going to be rough with each other, man. And it's not like, you know, we're targeting females in this. We're just rough a- amongst each other. And I think the elimination of aggressive activities is a mistake. I think it is. You know, I never forget watching some documentary on charter schools. And there was this one principal. He was noticing that his boys weren't doing so well. So what he would do, like first thing in the morning, he'll run laps with the boys. So that way that they could settle down when the school start. And um, you need that. It's just like, I think, you know, boys are not like women where we're drones, like Christina Hoffman. Summer says, like, we could just sit in the seat for eight hours a day and not necessarily get restless. I think that's a huge misnomer. And I think this idea of trying to eliminate gender identity is stupid. There's a reason why boys behave the way they do. And we need to take it seriously and not take away the activities that make them exceptional. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I mean, I think it's tough for a kid to sit in school. Even now, you know, you sit in school for however many hours, recess ends up being 15 minutes, 30 minutes for, I mean, you know, you get 30 minute lunch, 15 where you eating, 15 where you playing, then I just got to be able to sit down. And I mean, if you have somebody who needs to burn off that energy, I mean, at what point are you doing it? I just wonder too, like, how much do we hold the parents? Like, it, clearly, gym is like a mandatory part of school where it's class you have to take and pass. How how accountable are we holding the parents to making sure that their kids are active too? Think about the whole idea of technology. Okay, you come home. I'm not taking you to the park. Sit right here in front of the screen and do X, Y, and Z. And to be fair, you can still take your kids out to the park now during COVID. You can go out to an open field and play catch and do whatever. So... I'll put, I'll put that hand in hand with, okay, we're holding our parents uh, accountable to make sure that we're, that they're doing academics with their kids. Yeah, yeah I got to make sure that they have those type of physical outlets too. But like you're talking about during the course of the day though, like that, I don't see how a parent could monitor that during the course of a day while the kid is in school. Like, right, kids in school. But you also yeah. got to think about the fact, okay, look at the basic school day. <laughs> My kid is like, how much are they really playing throughout the day? So when they come home, or even on the weekends at some point, I gotta make sure that they're getting that in too. But like, I think, I, but I think the problem is, is like, you got these young boys, you know, puberty is kicking in, you know, they got all this, you know, testosterone that's just pumping through them. Like, yeah, in the evening you could do whatever you want, but that's not where the issue lies. I think the issue lies is during the course of the day, you know, you got this young man especially like if he's a tall dude like Schubert and Smith, like, you know, you being cramped in a seat for six hours or seven hours a day. I don't know how long the school, you know, school hours are. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, what do you like? And then have a 15 minute recess. What the, like, I didn't know recess was 15 minutes. I forgot how long recess was, but it's just like, that's nothing. I think honestly, you know, yeah, the parents could, should be involved, but I think, in all honesty, I think it's respecting, the the very nature of a young boy i think that's being disregarded and in regards of how they operate the way they think and 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 the things that the outlets that they need you know they're trying to treat young boys like they're girls and like where girls could be drones like my wife i'll never forget she's a academic academia you know she's into academia and stuff like that she graduated cum laude something cum laude i don't fucking know the prestigious um status but like yeah she told me one time like yo i could sit in the classroom all day i remember forget the first time we first started dating she said that i looked at her like yo you crazy i can't do that shit i i hated college so much bro i used to skip the next class because i felt like i sat down for too long in a lecture that's just the way i rolled yeah. <laughs> yeah. i mean not for nothing but you know I can't tell you. You know, I've had my son with me at the gym early in the morning and um, like uh, right like at seven, like somewhere around six thirty, seven o'clock in the morning. I have him practicing football drills. I got him riding on the on the stationary bike. I got him doing box jumps, calisthenics, all types of things, you know, and then after that. You know, he has something to eat, then he starts class and he is like completely focused. He's awake, he's alert, you know, and he's 
He's not like restless or anything. And he, he actually performs a lot better. You know, he performs a lot better. And a, a lot of, I find that this happens with a lot of boys and it's just mm-hmm. natural for them yeah. to be more physical. You know, it's just, funny that you say that because I have to, you know, there are times that I have to ask my male students to go for a walk. You know what I mean? To walk it out. Smith, let me I, ask you this question. Al. Because like, like Cass said, they were sitting too long in the class before and then they come to my class and that sitting again is like, you know, so that's why. Yeah. And the other part, guys, that's why they're fiddling with this online shit because now I'm sitting in front of a computer for hours at a time. I'm not even walking from class to class. I'm literally going from one screen page to another screen page. Mm. Uh, they have to keep that. They have to keep the, the first of all, the the aggressive play that we do. You know, we don't mean no harm by it. It's just boys being, as they say, boys. You know what I mean? We don't mean no harm by it. I'm not trying to hurt you. You know what I mean? Is, is it, but it is, it is a way of us. It's a way of us to each other. Incorrectly, because like these boys aren't being aggressive; they're being active. They're being intense. They're being they active. Have a lot of energy, but the whole but, thing is but, Shu, they're wait, not wait, shoot for an intent to hurt anyone or to. No, but I was going to say this though, Shu. The problem with that is that's why we get all these boys heavily medicated, man. So let me ask you this question. Elvis. We get them heavily medicated because we don't understand that boys have a certain level of act- activity. Mm-hmm. Like, I have to be fucking active. You don't have to put me on a pill to sedate me. I don't need that shit. I'm mm-hmm. just active. Like, bro, my son is five. This dude is so 24-7. I'm like, dude, you gotta like relax, man. Like, I can't, I can't run with you like this. <laughs> like, you, you, you know, daddy knees about to be time. shot. <laughs> you know what I mean? But he don't need no damn pill. He don't need no pill to be sedated or nothing like that. He's being a boy. Henry Smith, got a question. Just like that. Yeah, Henry got a question. Smith, you think it's your school? If you went to your principal and was like, Yo, I want to start whatever in the morning for the boys, where we run laps or work out, whatever. Do you think they say, okay, well, we gotta have something for the girls too? I think initially the first comment would be, well, what about the girls? And I would be like, well, did I come here and say mention girls? <laughs> yes, yes, Cash, I am that yes, asshole. That's what I would say. I'd be like, did I mention <laughs> girls? Daddy. Because it should seem like a girl should do something for the girls. Well, I'm talking about these boys that need to be reached. You know what I mean? That's the thing. Every time we want to do something for boys, especially the, the um, impoverished generation you know what i mean the, the youth and it's like well what about the girl well Speak so, on somebody, it. so is it fuck, so is it fucked up to be like okay so some of the girls want to join in on the laps would you let them do it it's fucked up to say no no i'll say can i keep a two-minute pace because if not then they can't <laughs> look out here like we're not going to dumb it down we're not going to slow it down and no honestly i would be honest and i would say this i'm not opposed to the girls joining but right now i'm focused on the boys all right I don't want girls coming in here with leggings and booty shorts and shit because now my boys ain't focused. And that's just the reality of shit. You know what I mean? And that's what I would be. I'm real. You know what I mean? I don't need girls coming in here right now because I'm trying to focus on the boys. Let me get them focused for a little bit and then we can start inviting girls. We haven't had the conversation. I haven't had the conversation with my boys about the girls yet. You know, when you go to approach, you know, the VP or whoever about it, I would say like, yo, you know, I, I don't have a problem with the girls having something in the morning. Ask one of the female teachers if they're willing to do it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, see, 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 I was thinking along that line, too, but then even when you think about the whole idea of like, okay, so they just running laps. Okay, they're just doing push-ups and sit-ups. If they're going to come and be serious, and, and like I'm torn with that shit, too, because I guess I'm just looking at it from like an administrative point. As a teacher, I'd be like, man, fuck that. I'm doing Okay, listen to what I said, Henry. High school, high school, I'm trying to focus on the boys. Do I want girls there? No, I don't, because they're going to lose focus, bro. What the fuck? And, ca- like, and I love what you said, Smith. They bro. will cause a distraction. Exactly. Like, the fuck? Like, I don't want girls there because I'm trying to focus on these boys. Let me build them up first to tell them how to deal with these girls. Let me tell them what they're feeling. You know, when they see a girl, they, they start feeling some type of way. Let me explain what they are feeling first. But Here's another thing, though. Here's another thing about bo- uh, a male perspective or a male mentality is the fact of we naturally gravitate towards brotherhood. 
wanting of you know we all have a clique or a group or you know a certain a number of dudes we hang out with and talk to and chill with this that and the other it's just our in our nature to have that fraternal you know aspect whether it was the boys used to hang out on the block way in front of your in front of your uh, house or something or y'all went to play basketball together or or even like this book club you know like this book the club. fraternal aspect that just comes naturally with males and everything if you know yeah. knows how females you know like two dudes can literally get to a physical brawl punching each other in the face this that and the other. i have friends that i've actually done that with that I actually became friends with after we fought yep I'm still friends with them to this day women will fucking be like oh she she kissed the guy that i like i'm not friends with her anymore ever you know what i mean it's just like <laughs> what like Not that wasn't your boyfriend. That wasn't somebody that you you liked him. So now you got beef for her. Now you're done with her. Like yeah, you, like you ever Wait. know how easy women friendships end? Hey Henry, Henry, you did this. You did this, Henry. You took a group of boys and did uh, insurance's insanity with them, right? You invited girls, and what happened? The girls ended up wanting to do what? Play fucking Scrabble. What happened? Yeah. Except for Ninsa. She was down, bro. <laughs> no, that's what I'm talking about, though. Hold on, hold on, Ninsa hold on. did a little Bo- bit, but then she focused on what? She focused on what? Playing Scrabble. What was the that event? Was thing. Let me get them to play Scrabble, because yeah, I don't want to do insanity. Insane. Yeah, we was we was doing an insanity workout in the after-school program. Oh, like the... um. Sean the, T. Deshaun T. Yeah, yeah. I was about to say. Yeah. I was about to say Billy Blanks. My bad, bro. <laughs> Sean T. Yeah, and the females did lean towards what's the name. You know, I mean, you do get a couple of them who would be serious. I'm not even talking about the whole if they would take it serious or not. It's just like, is it wrong to either say what well, they got to be included or to exclude them? Well, it okay, looks, so it looks like if I'm the... doing an art club, art club is open to everybody. If I'm doing a boys club, boys club is for boys. I don't understand why it got I don't understand why we have to have this conversation in 2020. Like, really, if it's a girls club, it's a girls club. I can't join it. Like, the whole thing is so, between so they got they got girls coding. Like, check it out, shoot. They got girls coding. My girl, my daughter goes to a girls coding. My son can't go because it's for girls. Like, this is real shit. Why can't my son go? Because it's for girls. But why can't my son go? Because it's for girls. It's girls coding. It's not for fucking boys. Do I say, oh, oh, I need to start picketing and my son should be invited into the girls coding? No, I found a fucking another program for him. That's all. We got too caught up in the bullshit of, well, you just don't want my child. No, no, no. It's for fucking boys. Like, fuck, your child is a girl. The fuck? You know what I mean? Like, at the end of the day, it's the reason why the sports are separated. Like, we don't have 18 locker rooms for motherfuckers. And motherfucking dudes shower with each other. Now, we're going to have a chick shower with the dudes. Like, if you want to be a team, we part of the team, right? And this is what we do. We roughhouse. Can I rough house with this girl? You want to be part of the team? This is what we do as team. We team, we team build. But they're going to call rough housing toxic, and you should do away with rough housing. Oh, I should do away oh, with rough housing. Yeah, even, though Sandusky Sandusky so said, even though Sandusky said he was rough housing with that boy in that, in that, in that locker room. Well, clearly we know where Sandusky is now. No, I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> we, we know where yeah, that motherfucker is. Like, look, at, look, at one, uh, look at the one uh, physical education education um uh director whatever in the book that said that um dodgeball should be removed from all programs yeah any, any physical education teacher that does dodgeball should be immediately fired like what dodgeball has been around forever you know nice. like, that used to be like one Years. of the best games yeah, it's man. The problem is, is when someone gets hurt, I think that there's that other aspect. They think that boy pl- rough play is too aggressive. And when somebody gets hurt, the schools don't want a liability. They don't want to necessarily pay out mm-hmm. that that lawsuit settlement. And I think, you know, Kelvin probably mentioned this in a different capacity. It all comes down to dollars. Like, they just see that, you know, you get a parent who's coddling their kid 
that kid comes home with a black eye because he didn't got kicked in the face with a kickball so hard. And it's just like, yo, how's my kid? It. Yeah, but that's that's why I'm cool. That's why I'm cool with the idea of dodgeball because even when we was at at uh, Ivy Hill, we would say, you know, the kids have to have some type of organized game that they're playing. You can't just go out and be, you know, hitting each other and playing, you know, uh, I'm going to hit the girl and run away. And so, like, it has to be an organized game. But, dude, but that dodgeball can be organized. So is kickball. No, but, but that's what I'm saying. That's yeah. why I'm saying that I'm in favor of keeping it. Because, okay, oh, yeah. I understand it's a, a violent game or whatever. But I'm about to say dodgeball is very violent. It is a very violent game. Are you kidding me? Um, when I was a when kid. They say no I, hair hunting. It's very violent because you can aim for somebody's feet at the time that you think they're going to jump and have them land on the ball and bust their damn head to have a concussion. Like, the right, dodgeball so, is very violent. Well, they still have the option to not play. Yeah, that's true. But here's my thing, It's right? not an option to not play when it's a gym sport and you have to participate. But yep, there's two, and there's a great, yeah. And that's, that's how you come true. home with a big black because guy. Kids, like, that's it. That's how you get the big black guy. Kids can cop out of gym nowadays. All you got to do is get your parents to sign off. Some, yeah. Uh, you, can, right? so you do a, a paper assignment for credit. Right, you say you what? Get, that's what they're doing in school? That's what they're doing in yeah. school now. You can cop out of gym by getting your parents to sign off. So here's the yeah, thing. The, way around. the same way you set permission slips to go on a trip, get a permission slip to play dodgeball and everything else. That You know what I mean? So that way, yeah. they, there's your liability. Because I remember when I was a kid, um, even though we were, when we were playing recess, right? This is how, how boys are. We made up games. One of the games we used to play, maybe Smith, you might have played this, we played a game called free fall, all right? It was kind of like football, but the problem was, like, if you didn't have even numbers, you know, you couldn't have two, you know, equal teams. So, literally, we throw the ball up, you catch every man for themselves. Whoever catches you, got to run to the end zone. You know, everybody goes after them, all right? And we had a ball. We had a great time. I mean, yeah, we got scraped. We and mind you, we did do some asphalt. This well, wasn't in mm-hmm. That's how it's always played. Yeah. <laughs> was in no, we played. We played right. it in grass, bro. We what played in grass. Oh. Nah, we oh, never had. Grass. Grass. Yeah, we didn't our, have grass. Well, here's, here's, here's what makes it worse. The, our school playground was also the school, the teachers' uh, parking lot. Okay, so mm-hmm. that that tells you exactly how hood that shit was. Yeah, but, that's how it was. But that's just what it is, you know. And we didn't have grass. Lives. We all survived. No one died. No one got a concussion. No one got like a broken bone or anything like that. Bro, I can tell you right now, some cats did get concussed. I remember one dude got his nose broke. But the problem, but what was different back then, the kid who got his nose broke didn't have their parent come in the next day trying to sue the entire school administration. Mm. Now you got parents who are saying like, yo, what happened? I'm suing everybody. I'm suing everybody. Get that that's money. Exactly. Get that, that's that why the worker. Bro, because one of my, I never forget, my boy Nafis, he broke his nose playing throw up. Yo, he, he was in school two days later. His mom wasn't trying to sue the school. None of that. It happened on school grounds. But today, you fast forward 20, 20 some odd years later, these parents are trying. I, yo, I remember watching a six year old black boy being sued playing dodgeball i sent you the article this shit was crazy because he they say he assaulted this other kid i'm thinking like a fight broke out when you find out the details of the story that this all happened in the midst of playing dodgeball you're saying like hold up so this kid threw a ball at another kid who accidentally broke his glasses and it kind of did something to around his eye they didn't necessarily impair his eye but it was just like that child parent felt like not only did they sued the school but they wanted the other child arrested bro so what you, you tell me? He was six years old. He hold was up, like bro. six years old. Y'all could hold up. Let me Google this this story, bro. So what y'all telling me is, if your kid come home with a broken nose, you're not gonna sue the school? It like yo, if he's telling me if, that if the game might... it was during a game, I ain't trying to have this. I ain't trying to sue no damn school. If, if he's being honest, on the school's part, like they did something really fucking stupid. Yeah, I'm yeah. school. But if my kid yeah. is playing a game. With other kids, let's say they were on a playground and they were, you know, messing around, and my kid fell off the fucking uh, uh, swing or something yeah. and landed badly, and I'm not suing the school. That's just dumb shit that happens in life. 
I was mis- mistaken. He was, ten. he was ten. He was ten. I sent the article. Now speaking of parents, let's get into that last question about you know Pratt's question. Oh, nice so transition, awesome. Schubert. That was a nice transition. Schubert. That was. You should be on the news. <laughs> Guys, right, so in the midst of you know we read Myth of Mel Power, you know we're reading this book, The War Against Boys, and it leads me to think like where are the fathers of these young boys that are failing? And I'm not saying like, answer to that. I'm not saying that they're deadbeat dads. I'm not, that's not what I'm trying to imply with that question. It's just like, if you're an active father and you're seeing the bullshit that is happening, not with just your own personal son, but maybe the entire group of boys at the school, where are the fathers to collectively come together and say, yo, enough is enough. They're getting banned from the school like Schubert. <laughs> I saw that one coming. I knew that one. <laughs> so, so, all right. So let me let me say this. All right. Number one is the fact of not all fathers are built the same. All right. So I personally, I know this already, am a very active father in my son's life. Everything that he does, I am fully aware of. I am fully involved in. I am constantly taking steps to um, further him in life and get him on the right track. All right. Some fa- a lot. Of, I don't want to say a lot of fathers, but some fathers are a little bit more hands off. They're just like go to school, do whatever the teacher tell you to do. All right. Some fathers are more hands off and they're like, oh, why didn't you get a um, good grade? This, that, and the other. They don't actually sit there and read with their son, do homework with their kid. You know, they don't actually practice with their kid when it comes to sports. If they're doing this, that, and the other, they're not doing that. There, a lot of people make kids, but they aren't parents. Mm-hmm. All right. All right. They make kids, but they aren't parents. There's a difference. Mm-hmm. All right. Anybody can make a kid. Being a parent is a, a whole nother realm. And a lot of people do not actually participate in, 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 in that, you know? And the thing is, they trust the system. They trust that when they send their kid to school, the teacher's going to know best. The administrator's going to know best. So whatever they, um, whatever is administered or this, that, yeah, they just go along with it, all right? They automatically assume that, you know, if I put my kid in front of Cartoon Network, it's Cartoon Network. It's kids. They know best. I'm not going to actually sit and watch what my kid is watching to figure out what the content is, this, that, and the other. And there's a lot of, a lot of parents are hands off when it comes to, you know, uh, when it comes to these things. Unless their kid comes home with a broken nose from dodgeball, then they're now they're paying attention, you know. So I don't think that the fathers aren't around. I think they're just you know, a lot of parents are hands off when it comes to these things. They they basically expect the the system to 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 do well. And obviously, we all know if we pay attention, government doesn't do anything well. Yeah, I think I think a lot of it too is like <clears throat> the moms are usually the ones who's you know keeping in contact with the teachers. They're going to back to school night, and the dads are the ones who's normally working. I mean, this is so, true just taking a lead on it. And I don't even really know that that necessarily has a lot to do with the whole class. No, nah, that either. shit got to do exactly what you said, bro. Yeah, so, I mean... And I'm going to piggyback with you. The, the moms is a lot more... The moms is a lot more involved in that. Nah, but you got to remember... Going on. Moms is involved because the households you're talking about are single family households for the majority. But Smith, think about the back to school nights. Yeah, maybe most of middle school. But you're yeah, thinking where about the, it. Where they, listen, where the mom shows up because the dad is working. Okay, how often is that? I mean, it happens. How I'm not, often? That's no, not a... That's not a that's that's like a fucking unicorn, bro. Yeah, that's it's, not it's awesome. cat. Yeah. First of all, look, I'm gonna say this because I've seen the parents who had to work. I've seen the parents who actually took off work. I've seen all the I've seen the whole gambit of it. You know what I mean? And the majority of parents who are serious about their child's education makes it to see about their child's education. And that's it. Ain't no working, ain't no excuses. They make sure that they see about their child's education. And that's it. And like Schubert said, you got parents who are um, hands-on, and you have parents who are hands-off. 
And that's what it is, Henry. You don't have any children yet, so you don't really understand that but, that's what it is. Smith, I'm saying the same thing. The, the mom is normally the one in that situation. And I and I did bring it up. Because of it the mom is there no, because it's a that, single household, Henry. Yeah, but I'm just bringing up this example because Cass said it's... Okay, bring well, up my example. Let's talk about Smith, me. Talk about he, me. Led, he led with, we're not saying that it's single family households. We're talking about households where both parents are there. That's what he led with when he asked the question. That's why okay, I use that example. Okay. Both parents are there, right? Yeah. Now, I got a question, Henry. You you have both parents, right? What do you mean? You have both parents in your household at some point? Yeah, the stepfather. Did, did both of them come to see about your schooling? No, my mother. That's what I'm Why saying. Didn't your step, okay, my, let, let me finish my question. Why didn't your stepfather come? Because he was well, working? Well, I think in this specific example is because he was... Like, that's not my son? Yeah, I think that's what it was in this specific Oh, I'm sure. Let's yeah. get down to it. Let's have, uh, it's 2021. Let's have a conversation. So yeah. he chose not to see about your education because he was just there for your mother. Schubert, did you have your father and your mother? Yes, I had both they, my mother. They and both come and see about your education. Yep. Cash, did you have your father and your mother? The funny thing nah. is, my dad, so way before we okay. had smartphones and all that, my dad, you know, I told you, I'm one of nine kids. So mm -hmm. my dad was so meticulous. He used to keep a calendar on the wall, and he would have everyone's teacher, um, parent-teacher nights, and this and any other report cards, test all that written on the calendar. Like, this whole calendar was, like, filled with all of our schedules and everything, you know, um, like, my dad was on point with it, you know? Like, he missed nothing. He knew about everything. And if he couldn't make it to, let's say, a parent-teacher, this, that, and the other, you know, um, my mom would go, and then he would, uh, when she, when he would meet up with her, you know, later on that evening, he wants to know everything that was said, or he would even send her with questions that he wanted asked or answered, this, that, and the different, other. Different, listen, hey, Schubert, different kind of parenting. That's my what I'm saying. My father used to see about it until I was eight, and then... My okay. father didn't see about it anymore. It's about parenting. You know what I mean? And that, that father thing, like like I said, if you are serious about your children, I don't care about work. I don't care nothing about that. You see about your kids, bruh. You know what I mean? It's not too many of us, first of all, that's working these night jobs where, and, and the, the flip side of that, Henry, okay, so what? I'm working tonight. I still see about my child. I send a note before. I already know that um, back to school night is going to be tomorrow. I know this. And I said to the teacher, I can't make it to back to school night, but I still want to meet with you about my child. You see about your child. All these fucking dumbass excuses are just that. They're dumbass excuses, bro. And I'm never going to go with that with the kids, ever, because I know what I go through. You know what I mean? And I know what I do and how hard I go for my own. So all and those not are nothing, excuses. Not, not for nothing, but like, you know, it's not like way back when we were growing up. When we were growing up, you know, it was just like back to school night. This is the only time you get to see the teacher and that's it. Yeah. Nowadays, like they, I've seen that in a lot of these schools, I don't know if they work and do the same thing in your schools, where teachers will set up appointments to meet up with you if you can't make it to a certain time. They'd give you a time frame, like, okay, can you meet up exactly. at 5 in the afternoon? Can you make up at 7 p.m.? Can you make, you know, can you meet up on this day or this time? So it's not like there aren't options. If you mm -hmm. really want it to happen, and you know, my my whole thing is once again, <laughs> I'm sorry, world, hey, Schubert, do they still give you work. options? Do huh? you still have options? Do I still have options? Yeah, well, you know, <laughs> now my options are online, they're not actually in the school building. I got I got banned from the school for <laughs> Yo, that is terrible being too aggressive. <laughs> You know, for being too aggressive. So now, now I meet with teachers and principals and administrators online because they. Bro, when are they just gonna lift the ban? They gotta leave it. Yeah. They gotta get hey, past I got, it. I got it's been all year. Yeah, I got another question: Do they think that you come across aggressive online also? Uh, probably, but you know, they probably don't feel, <laughs> don't feel like it's. They like gonna be typing in all crap. caps. Oh, so Patrice, on the line. why is he yelling? <laughs> <laughs> Why are you yelling? <laughs> nah, you know what? The, the reason I, I, hate to, I hate to be like this and uh, sound sexist, but also you gotta realize our schools, you know, and and you y'all can correct me if I'm wrong, are female dominated. 
And no, they the are. Female, but when you have they a female-dominated school that, and these females don't understand male behavior or what the difference between aggression or or just maybe someone being a little bit more intense or, you know, how, uh, what, um, so for instance, me, when I go to speak to, um, to the teachers, because I am a little bit more um, outspoken, they take it as aggression. And it's just the same way I'm speaking to y'all now, where it's like, I make sure I get my word in. They take that, oh, he's, he's, he's bullying us or pushing us around or this, that, and the other. No, I'm making sure that you don't over, you know, you don't speak over me, that you don't, you know, mm -hmm. conversation in a, in, a, in a manner that is, is conducive towards you. I'm looking out for my child's best interest. You're looking out for your best interest. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, there, there was a, a famous clip. I don't know if you guys remember this. Uh, so Marsha Marshawn Lynch had a, um, a football camp and he was running these kids ragged in this football camp. And one of the moms took offense to like how hard Marshawn Lynch was having the kids go. And so he went up to the stands to confront the moms and the, he, and then the mom was just going off, and dude, Marshawn Lynch was just like, "Yo, I'm not gonna address you. Where's the kid's father?" And that's what made me prompt this question was mm -hmm. just like, you know, you have these situations because a lot of times I think, you know, I could remember like one of the reasons that I give credit to my mom because you know being raised in a um uh, uh, a non father household for the majority of my adolescent life, you know, my mom realized that I needed um male mentoring male supervision and stuff like that but one of the things that she admitted that mm -hmm. she said she was just like i probably would have went soft on you on a lot of occasions like when you wanted to quit wrestling at one point i probably would have allowed you to quit wrestling but your coaches did it you know and i just think that a lot of times what i what i'm seeing with these the situation with these young boys these these women they're just I don't know. I'm not trying to say they don't care about their sons because they truly do. But I just feel like fathers will make a better argument and a better case for their kids, man. I just think that like in certain situations, and I just think that a lot of times the moms are just allowing the wussification or the pussification of their sons happen in schools with no and provide no real solutions for them. That's just my opinion. I granted I gotta probably back that up with studies and stuff like that, but I think I think, yeah. I think you're on it, man. I think you're definitely on to something there. I don't know. Hey, yo, I'm Smith, you making yourself a drink, bro? <laughs> like, I'm not even sure if... I think like, Smith is... See, this topic getting him stressed, bro. <laughs> like, I need a drink. <laughs> I'm not sure if it's, if it's so much of um, that the fathers put out a better case for their for their sons than their, than, you know, their, their mothers. I think it's more the father understands where the sons come from because he's walked that path already. Yeah, so yeah, when, yeah, exactly. So the whole thing is, it's like, I find that I have had better interaction with my son's coaches, even when my son's, um, so there was a time, my son's uh, principal is a blonde female um, and she feels threatened by me. But when she was out doing, uh, her pregnancy or whatever for maternity leave, they had another uh, principal come in um, to oversee the school from another school, and it was a male. Me and him got along just fine because he understood where I was coming from as a male. Mm -hmm. So the whole thing is, is the fact of I can empathize with a woman. Like this, one of the things I can't understand about like male feminists, right? Male feminists are so full of shit because it's like, yeah, you could empathize with a woman, but you don't know what a woman goes through and what her struggle is, this, that, and the other, and on all that other bullshit. You know what I mean? Like, you don't know what she goes through. So the whole thing is, it's like, um, the same thing goes the other way around. Women don't understand a male perspective because they don't walk that walk. But one male will understand another male. This is probably why you know, um, Lynch wanted to be, meet with the father because he'll understand like, okay, well, have you ever played football? Have you ever been this, that, and the other? He understands the aggression. He understands the hard work and this, that, and the other. Uh, mom, who's never gone through that, is like, don't hurt my baby. So I think it's more that perspective of I've walked that walk, son. I've walked that walk, uh, you know, um, 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 
male, like, you know, male teacher or male coach or male, whoever that other male is. So we have that, that, that fraternal or brotherhood that we understand that walk where females don't understand that walk because they never had to do it. They never had to do it. And you said where the fathers, I think she said there was 1.1 million males in jail and that shit was like 1997. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So that's where the fathers are. Right? That's where the fathers are. I like what you said about how your mother did it because that's what my mother took. You know, when my father did the shit um, that's what my mother said. Like, like, yo, this dude needs a male role model. You know what yeah, I mean? Exactly. And that became my uncle who I told you all would take me to New York and drop me off and be like, yeah, find your way back home type shit. You know what I mean? So yeah. <laughs> different kind of different kind of role model. But um to 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 raise a man, a woman can never do that shit. Um the war against boys, the male needs to be in the in the in a young male's life. Um if the male has his father there, his shit is going to be different. Um, his handling of women, his handling of finances, his handling of drugs and alcohol, his, his understanding of life, all that shit's going to be different if the male has his father there. You know what I mean? The female is going to do the best she can, which my mother did. Um, but there is always going to be a part that's lacking because a female cannot raise a fucking man mm -hmm. I'm going to double down on that a female cannot raise a man yeah man it, it's I don't know it, it's just it's just one of those things I'm seeing these boys fail and you're just like and you're hearing the statistics and you're hearing the studies and I'm just like man you know you got the education system clearly not giving a fuck about these boys and I just feel like these boys don't mm -hmm. have an, they, they don't have an advocate like who's advocating for them you got to yeah. understand that most boys, their education was to do what? Go to war, man. You yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> like, that was our education. You're going to war. You're going to go fight for the country, bro. That's what you're going to do. So, <laughs> Mel's, Mel's got to this point where um, you got you got your sports, you got your war. Which one are you going to go do? You know what I mean? You're so going to go to sports or you're going to go to war? Just to piggyback off everything we're saying, right? And just to give clarification, because, you know, Kel keep bringing up the band shit, you know, and I don't, I want to make it be very clear. I didn't get, you know, the this, this stupidity of what I got banned for. All right. I'll make it real. <laughs> all right. My son was in the second grade. There was a teacher. That you got to give a black a backstory, too. Why yeah, you like, my, my, I we get it. This, okay, this so, nigga in like the fourth it's, grade it's, now. It's, it's relevant. It's relevant. Here's why. <laughs> second grade. He's put on a project, him, um, so all the classmates were put on a project, you know, and they're broken up into teams of four, right? So the project was draw a suburban, um, uh, a suburban um, background or something, right? Something in suburbia. So it was my son, another, you know, uh, male friend, another, just two boys and two girls, one my, my son being one of them. So they're all drawing on this one piece of paper, together you know this this whole entire scene now here's the thing the girls of course drew houses and rainbows and flowers and and, and sunshine this that and the other the two boys drew cops and robbers and because the boys know there's a no gun policy in the school they didn't draw guns they drew water cannons shooting from the cop car. Yo, my nephew got in trouble when he was in a Third or fourth grade for drawing a gun. But go ahead, my bad. No, just just to give you a background, my son got in trouble for making a finger gun. You know, with his his friends, they were playing cops and robbers during play uh, during uh, gym time, and I got a phone call saying, um, "Yeah, uh, Mr. Lesmont, your son." You know, I'm like, really, finger guns? Like this is this is the problem in schools because really, like, I'm you calling me for this? All right. Anyway, whole thing is. My son got punished for drawing cops and robbers, all right? He got his recess taken away, and the teacher wanted him to sit there and write a, uh, a, a letter of why he was wrong. And it's just like, at the time, he's an eight-year-old boy, a typical eight-year-old boy. What did he do wrong? You left him to his own imagination. 
you left them to what you know to to draw what they think and guess what there are police that drive through the freaking town with the sirens and this that and the other you know he's a typical year, eight-year-old boy there's police Why? in suburbia there's police in yeah suburbia i hear cops around here all the time all the time you know and the whole thing is so you know the whole thing is my son was really upset about it and you know and the whole thing is this teacher gave him a hard time more than once so i went to go see the teacher about it and the principal came to the meeting and this that and the other and i said what exactly did my son do wrong well we agreed and she says we agreed that you know what he drew is in i'm like no 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 no. i didn't ask you what you got my son i asked you what did he do wrong what was his crime well he has a he has quite the uh um what did, was the word she said basically she was saying that he has quite a um infatuation with you know like police and military and this that and the other and i'm just like what boy doesn't you know All right, fellas, I remember- sorry to interrupt i gotta bounce catch you guys next week we'll have definitely a longer stream